Hey guys, it's Jeff from Everything Plants. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to share my top five easy to care for trailing house plants. And although there is a number of them up on this plant shelf, I'm gonna start off with my most favorite, the Philodendron in Brazil. You can see this one is starting to trail down on the plant shelf here, but it's actually climbing upwards as well. And it's adhering to my drywall. It's actually stuck on there uh, from these little area roots you can see up here sticking to the drywall that's crazy i know i had a plant friend that this happened to uh, as well with some of their plants but uh, it's pretty cool how they can just adapt to their environment but look at these leaves this is one plant uh, this is actually my second philodendron in brazil um, my first one it was uh, pretty badly infested with thrips and i gave it away to someone to rehab so i'm not too sure uh, how they made out with that plant but look at the size of this leaf huge just absolutely beautiful variegation. Um, I actually lost a few of my philodendrons, um, two thrips, but this is one that I had to replace. So one of my local plant shops had this very full philodendron uh, Brazil hanging pot, and I have since repotted it in this uh, terracotta pot. Super easy to care for. The only thing I do for it is give it water when it's dry. So I will soak the soil, let it come out the bottom of the uh, drain hole. It's a little bit tougher now. I can't really take it off the shelf just because it is adhering to the drywall. I might have to um, make something like a, a climbing moss pole or something like that instead of uh, destroying my wall. Um, that way I can take it down if I need to uh, do any plant care or give it some water. But what an absolutely beautiful plant. Easy to propagate, easy to care for. If you are looking to start out with house plants and are wanting a trailing plant, this is one type of plant that I would highly recommend. It is absolutely stunning and super easy to care for. Just get my camera shadow out of the way. Each leaf is just a little bit different. Some have more variegation than others, but you know there's a few different types of uh, these variegated ones. There's the uh, cream splash, I think, and some other ones, but I don't know. This is the Brazil and it's absolutely beautiful. Plant number two is the Hoya Crimson Princess. This often gets confused with the Crimson Queen. The princess has a green leaf with some variegation in the middle and the queen is basically reversed. It has a uh, green in the middle and some variegation along the edges. If you are looking to start off with Hoyas, this is one that I would recommend starting off with. It's uh, pretty low maintenance. Uh, basically just give it some water when the soil is dry. Just make sure it's in a kind of a nice airy, well-draining soil. Uh, it does get sun stressed. It gets these uh, pink variegated uh, or variation on the leaves when it is in higher light but these leaves are absolutely beautiful very easy to propagate uh, this one's been uh, chopped up a couple times as it gets these kind of long tendrils um, these ones are actually starting to produce some leaves so i'm not going to cut them back but i have propagated it in water i've also done it in uh, perlite and I, I think i had these ones in moss as well um, here is a uh, I guess a small little pot that I uh, took a bunch of single uh, leaf cuttings or stem cuttings and now they're starting their own little branches. You can see a tiny little leaf right there. So yeah, super easy to propagate. This one I'm actually giving to a friend as I don't need another one hanging around the house here, but um, just absolutely beautiful. I love the kind of white, uh, kind of cream uh, coloration in the center of the leaves. I just sprayed it down, uh, just kind of rinsed it off today, gave it some water and it's looking absolutely fantastic. Okay, so I have it hanging on my hook. It's just up in the south facing window. So it does not, uh, despite being in the south facing window here, uh, the sun is quite high in the sky. So all the direct sunlight is basically to these plants. It uh, gets a lot of bright light, but really no direct sunlight up uh, higher in the window here. And this is my Matilde and my Rebecca, and they love this placement as well. So plant number three is the Pothos plant. I uh, included both the Marble Queen and the Neon, as these are both my favorite type of Pothos plants, and I couldn't decide which one to use for this video. There's many different uh, other varieties, like the Golden and Jade and that sort of thing, but uh, this one has uh, some white variegation on the leaf, and they're all just a little bit different. So this one has more green than white, Whereas a leaf up here, like this one, has a lot of white variegation with almost like a little bit of a green splash on it. So absolutely beautiful. These are super common houseplants and they're common for a reason. They don't require much care. Um, just 
basically let them dry out completely, give them some water. They might get a little wilted or droopy when they need a good thorough watering. Easy to propagate and they're very fast growers. The thing that uh, makes these plants particularly easy to care for is their, uh, I guess, wide range of lighting conditions that they uh, can grow in anywhere from basically low light to highlight, uh, no direct uh, sunlight for these guys. So I would consider these uh, right now in kind of like a medium light situation. Uh, these are, not too sure about this one actually, but uh, this one is a propagated cutting that I did in water uh, from the mother plant. It's in its own little pot, uh, just a little white porcelain pot, and it is starting to uh, trail down quite nicely already. And this one, I think I just bought as a separate plant, but it's, uh, it's starting to trail down. I think I give the edge to this uh, neon prothos as the uh, kind of lime green, almost yellowish leaves look absolutely stunning when it's clumped together with plants with uh, some darker foliage. It just really makes it pop. So these are super easy care trailing plants. Um, and if you want something really quick and fast growing, this is the choice for you. Just gonna quickly show the placement of these two plants. So there's the Marble Queen back there. Here's the Neon. You can see when it's uh, beside my Scandapsis Shade Satin, which has a darker leaf, the uh, uh, bright uh, yellow and kind of lime green leaves just really pop on this plant. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Plant number three is my String of Pearls. I've had this one for about two years now and I bought it as like three small little cuttings uh, for like five bucks, I think it was. And it is, uh, it's getting quite large. I've featured this one in a couple videos on my channel here. Um, I did have it in like a porcelain pot previously and I don't know if I was overwatering it or if the uh, pot was holding onto too much moisture, but my plant started to decline a little bit and uh, I made a video on uh, repotting it into a terracotta pot. Gotta get my pencil out. Into a terracotta pot and that's what saved my string of pearls. I think the soil was just staying too wet. It was actually getting a little bit of root rot. I potted it up in uh, the terracotta and it's since uh, recovered, I guess, and it's uh, doing quite well. I have it on my plant table um, near my south facing window, just letting it kind of cascade down. And uh, yeah, it's done really well. It's gotten one flower so far. I'll see if I can find that. Uh, I think I took a picture of it, but I'll see if I can find uh, the picture of the one flower. So I was pretty proud of that. It's uh, really liking life in this uh, terracotta pot. And uh, this is uh, a plant that's pretty popular on my channel. I get uh, quite a bit of uh, comments on it, yes, and it's uh, super easy to propagate. I know a lot of people have difficulty with this plant, so that's why I was a little hesitant to put it in the easy care trailing house plants. But if uh, if you have a bright sunny room, uh, just make sure you give it all, enough light. Obviously, it's uh, got these uh, fat little juicy succulent leaves. Just make sure you put it in like a cactus or succulent soil. Just put it in terracotta. That way, it doesn't hold on to too much moisture. Um, terracotta is really good at absorbing uh, moisture on the sides of the pot and then evaporating it as it's quite porous. So if you have this plant, I would take it out of the like a nursery pot or a porcelain pot right away, put in terracotta and you should be fine. Probably water mine uh, once every two weeks in the summer and maybe once a month in the winter. Just pay attention to the leaves. Uh, sometimes they'll get a little bit wrinkly or uh, uh, they'll shrivel up. Uh, if the soil is dry, they probably uh, means it needs a good thorough watering. You can see right here that's happened in the past. So it's gotten some uh, kind of brown dead edges or ends there. And uh, some of the pearls themselves have uh, shrivel up and die back. So as long as the soil is uh, bone dry and you see uh, some signs of um, die back like that, then it probably needs a good thorough watering. So yeah, just pay attention to the uh, to the plant and it'll tell you whether it needs to be watered or not. So good draining soil, good pot, and that should do it. Plant number five is one that you don't see very often, or at least I don't. This is the Peperomia angulata or the Peperomia beetle as it's commonly called. This one has kind of a very distinctive, kind of a dark green leaf with these uh, center uh, lime or bright green, and it's just absolutely stunning little leaf. So. Peperomias can be a little bit finicky when it comes to watering, but this one, in my opinion, is probably one of the least uh, fussiest ones out there. Um, basically, I have it in a cactus uh, succulent mix right now and I let it dry out. It doesn't really get droopy or anything like that. It doesn't lose many leaves, uh, but I just keep an eye on the soil, give it a good throw of watering, just let it kind of drip out the uh, bottom of the pot there. And then I put it back in the uh, south-facing window or sorry, just off to the side, it's on a plant shelf 
it's uh, on a west facing wall so it gets uh, plenty of kind of like uh, easterly morning sunlight, maybe a little bit of direct sunlight, but not enough to scorch the uh, leaves itself. So this is a super easy peperomia. So if you're looking to get into peperomias, um, this is probably one that you'd want to start off with if you can find it. Um, it's not very common around uh, where I live, but it's just uh, it's just a very beautiful trailing peperomia, and it's kind of got these like little, I don't know, delicate leaves. This one reminds me of how a Hoya would grow just because it gets uh, two little leaves per leaf node and then it just uh, pushes out a kind of longer stem and it just trails down into a nice well, trailing, <laughs> trailing plant. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions about any of the plants in the video, please leave it down below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. So thanks again for all the support. Thanks for watching my videos. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.